Hello, this is Matthew Randall, and um, this is the uh, next tutorial in Match Mover. So, in the previous tutorial, we set up loads of uh, track points, and we've tracked various points on our scene. Now, what we want to do is use that information to actually uh, solve uh, the camera position and the camera movement within that scene. Okay. So, what we want to do is I want to go into my cameras here in my project window here so I can select camera one and what I need to do is input information uh, about this camera okay so the first thing I want to do is uh, put in the size of the film back uh, this is actually the camera aperture uh, sometimes known as a film back effectively it's the size of the sensor so I'm working with the Panasonic AF 101 um, and uh, I'm going to work in inches because that's what I've calculated the sensor size in. In fact, actually, no, I know it in millimeters anyway. The size of the uh, the uh, the uh, sensor, which is a micro four thirds sensor, is 17.8 millimeters wide by 10 millimeters uh, high. Okay, uh, and that should give us an aspect ratio uh, that's similar to what we've got here. Okay. Now what I want to do is set the focal length because I know that the focal length is fixed. So I want to go 25 and set the focal length to be fixed. Okay, and what I can do is tell it that it's uh, this parameter here tells it that it's a you know that I haven't used a zoom. Okay, that means I've used a zoom. That there's a variable focal length. The focal length is varying throughout the shot. That's not the case. This is a fixed focal length, so it knows that. It, if stuff's getting bigger, that's because the camera's moving into the scene, okay? Not because I'm zooming. Uh, so set that to 25 millimeters. And this one here, uh, sometimes you're not you're not entirely sure what it, what the actual zoom was, you, the actual uh, yeah the actual focal length was, or and that may be because you don't actually have accurate information on the film back, okay? Uh, or the size of the film back, or it may be because you don't have um, accurate uh, information on the zoom. If it was a zoom lens and it was somewhere in the middle, you might roughly know where it is. Uh, if it's a cheap zoom lens, even if the readings on the zoom lens might not be 100% accurate. Okay, so um, so uh, that might be another reason why it's approximate. So if you don't know what the focal length is or you don't know what the film back is you can kind of set it with an initial sort of approximate value and then let it sort of search from there we know what the value is uh, and what I want to do here is say as I want to use this equal sign so I don't want to go roughly equals you know it's, it's I th we think it's roughly right I want to go yes that is right it's fixed and then we set this to 25 okay and effectively what happens is if you've got this roughly equals uh, this will work as an initialized like a starting point to look for okay in effect so I want to go it's equal to great another thing that we can do is we can we won't need to do that in this case but we can add constraints to our camera uh, so I could go new constraint okay and I could, what I could do is constrain, you could either constrain the focal length and say, right, we know what the focal length is. Well, we kind of already done that, so we don't need to do that. One of the things I wanted to just show you quickly was this thing called the nodal pan. And what we can do is constrain the camera. Uh, if we click nodal pan, what will happen is, if we're panning on the nodal point, what will happen is you won't get any parallax effect because because of the way the camera is moving, doesn't matter how far the object is away from the camera, it will move across the scene at exactly the same speed as everything else. So it's not like a track. Uh, and that's, that's really important to be aware of that uh, with a nodal pan. So the normal algorithms that this software uses, uh, uh, which is looking for parallax to resolve the position of the camera, wouldn't work. So by, by clicking this option, if you have a nodal pan, it will use a slightly different uh, method for solving the position of the camera that should work uh, for a nodal pan. Okay, uh, we don't actually have a problem. So I'm just going to go Control Z and get rid of the, any constraints that I was putting on there, um, so that we don't have those. Great. Okay. So I've got my le focal length. That's all set. Let's just check. Yes, my film back's all set. That's great. Now what I want to do is uh, I'm now ready to solve for the camera. So I'm now going to go. Uh, into 3D tracking and click solve for camera okay and what will happen is 
it will go through all the frames. So it's gone through all that information and then solved uh, and, and used all that tracking data to solve the position of the camera in 3D space. Okay. The next step is to check the quality of that solve. So uh, what I want to do is click on 3D. That's the first thing I want to do. And the first thing I want to do is just click on uh, right click inside the scene somewhere and just click lock to camera. Okay. And you can see we've got these little sort of uh, cube points here okay all right and that's just indicating um, uh, these little cube points here are just indicating where um, uh, it's indicating where those points are in 3d space but because we're locked through the camera these should line up perfectly so first thing you want to do is just check that these 3d solver points are lining up with our 2d points uh, which it seems to be doing. That's great. Okay. Next thing we want to do is if I just go back into 2D, then back into 3D, we get our sort of freeform camera view again. And what I can do is I can actually move around this now. And if I actually just sort of pan this, what you can see is we can actually see that these these blue points here, we can get an idea of where they are in 3D space. OK, um, and that's really critical. We want to evaluate where these are in 3D space to get an idea of how, you know, is, is this kind of giving us what we would expect? So, for example, first thing we can do is sort of check the floor. Uh, so I'm going to try and rotate this round and up. OK, um, and you can see that we've got our floor markers kind of where we would expect them to see them. Um, trying to see if I can get a better view of that yeah so you can see that they're kind of on a you know you'd expect to see them all on a kind of a plane and that seems to be the case okay so that's kind of good okay um, again I could check the position of these markers so I'd expect these markers to be further forward than these markers okay uh, so again I'm gonna go just and move above the camera shot here let's just dolly it down yeah so I can see that these are in front of it okay and indeed uh, lower as well so that's another good thing and then finally I'm just going to check these wall markers so a little bit of the toughy but I'm going to try and move around the scene here and really what I'm looking for is for these wall markers again okay um, Let's have a look here what we have. So I'm not a hundred percent happy with those wall markers. Let's just move back. Um, let's have a look what we've got here in terms of these two points here. So it's kind of accurate because this is on the baffle. Okay. So this would be on the baffle. Uh, which is a, a couple of centimeters out, protruding out from the wall, okay, where we're tracking here, and this is on the wall. So you would expect these two points to be, you know, it has kind of correctly figured out that this point is actually further forward than uh, it, this is further back on the wall than the other point. So that's good. Uh, let's have a look at the alignment of these two points as well. So that's these two here. Uh, Hang on, sorry. Let's just. I might want to zoom out here. Yeah. Again, my only issue is it's not really uh, with this. They're not spot on to a plane here, so that does worry me a little bit. And let's have a look. So, if I look at that, in fact, let's just look, if we put that onto a plane like that, okay, because obviously the camera is pointing downwards, so this is our plane, it's kind of making it slightly flatter. Let's have a look how this looks now with these points. So, yeah, these points are much further in uh, than the other ones, so I don't know. 
I would be tempted to possibly get rid of one of a couple of these points to see if that improves the accuracy, resolves that problem. Because that's not entirely accurate, I think, from what we're seeing here. Let's have a look. Again, I can see it from above. Let's have a look from it above. Uh, that's these two markers. So I'm happy with that. That marker. In fact, these are the markers on the floor, aren't they? It does get tricky to see what you're looking at here. That marker and that marker. Happy with those two. Less happy with those two. So what I might do is go back into my TD view, and you can see what the what we're tracking here. Um, what I might do is, uh, I think what I'm going to do is ignore this one, track ten. So I can tell it. I can right click on here and say, and where it says use for 3D solving, I can turn that off. And then what I could do is just solve for 3D again and see what I get. Um, scene, tracking, solve for camera again. Okay. Go back into my lock for camera. That's looking good. Okay. And then go back into the 3D scene again. And let's just check what's happening here. So that's, we've ignored track 10, so we've got track 9, let's have a look. And you can obviously, also as you play this back, you can actually see the, uh, the camera dollying forward as well. So you can actually see the movement of the camera, here it is moving forward so it's resolved that and it's kind of come up with that solution I'm just looking for the accuracy of the locators at the moment uh, so obviously what we want to do is assess the accuracy of this before we do anything with it because if we've got inaccurate data going into Maya that's not going to uh, work too well for us let's have a look so again these are quite good I'm happy with those two and again not so happy with the way it's positioning that but again that could be to be honest that could be the fact that that the wall is going in this direction um, again this isn't really an accurate representation of, of space so this can throw you off uh, and actually if we look at this sort of uh, if I rotate this let's have a look and just position that so here's my markers I've got this line here and then if I look at say yeah, the markers here and on the table as well, you can see that they're roughly at the same angle as this wall. So actually, uh, my worries previously, I think, are, I think actually um, my, my previous concerns are, are kind of alleviated there. I think the wall does go in this direction. Even though the image plane kind of is flat here, the wall's actually going in this direction here so I'm going to uh, reinstate this uh, new tracking point if I reinstate this mm, in fact I think I'm gonna leave it now 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 I've left it I'm gonna leave it okay but I'm, I'm happy with that I think that that is that is uh, uh, effectively um, accurate so the key part of what I was doing there was just checking to see uh, whether how accurate the 3d solution was okay if I'm happy with that solution, obviously I can go File, Save. So I'm going to go Save As. Uh, I won't save it over the top just in case I've created a problem. OK. Uh, try a bit of version control. And now what I want to do is uh, uh, create a coordinate system. OK. So I'm going to go back into the 2D view. What I need to do now, uh, in fact, if I go into Lock camera I need to now create a coordinate system so I need to identify uh, a zero zero point in this space 
and which direction the x and y and z axis go in and what I also need to do is actually define some kind of scale as well okay so um, the way I do that is I go into coordinate system just right click on that go new coordinate system and in here we've got a load of information that we can use to do our track points what I find is when I'm doing this I find it easier to be in the 2D view because I can actually hover over when I'm in the 2D view I can just hover over the track points obviously just switch between 2D and 3D view by using this icon here uh, I can just hover over the track points and get the numbers so when I'm trying to work out which track points I want to follow I can just do that I need to first of all specify a point of origin I'm gonna set a point on the floor as the point of origin I'm just gonna go for this middle one okay um, it might be that you're doing something where you really need that point of origin to be accurate so really ideally put a marker on there so that you can track it and then set that as your point of origin so that'll be our zero zero point so I think that was, was that oh that's track three sorry track three then what I want to do is set up a scale so I'm going to select two points on here and set what the distance between those points were so this table is great I've measured this table and so I know what the width of this table is so I can use these two track points so that's track 6 and 5 so I select track 6 track 5 and I can set the distance between those two track points so the distance between those two track points is uh, uh, 0.75 meters okay um, yeah. Next thing I want to do is set up my axes. So I can either specify, I only need to specify two axes. Uh, so I need to specify two of the x, y, z axes. Once you've got two axes, you can obviously because you can obviously determine where the third axis is automatically. So you don't only need to tell it where two axes are. Okay. So I'm going to set so that the x axis goes along this table. That's going to be my x axis. So. Again, I'm going to use tracks. Uh, was it sorry? Six and uh, six and five. Six and five. Um, so there's different ways of determining the axis. You can actually determine it as a line uh, from uh, the point of origin from here to another point. That could be the x-axis, okay? Or you can do a line through two points, which is the one that I'm going to use here. So it's going to be from track six to track five. We've already got track 5 selected, that's great. The other way that you can do it, which I'm going to use for the Y axis, is go normal 2. So I can select three points on the floor, and a normal is obviously by selecting those three points, I'm actually defining a plane, because the only way you can resolve those three points is by having a plane. And then what it will do is uh, uh, normal 2 means that it's right angles to the plane. So obviously by having the plane where the floor is, uh, and I go it's normal to the floor that's then the y-axis I hope that kind of makes sense so I want to select these three I'm going to just select the ones furthest apart so I'm going to go one track one track two oh hang on what have I done there track two let's try again track two and track four and actually what it's done is it's reset everything is this is a little bit of a quirk with this program if you click off it before you've actually applied the coordinate system it resets everything you've put in there which is a bit of a pain so it means I'm gonna to have to go back in I'll select track two as my origin uh, set that as uh, 0 0.75 uh, set my track uh, it was from track Five between six and five. Is that right? Six and five, and then obviously this was through two points between track uh, six and five. Doesn't matter which way round you do it. Okay, let's just check I've got that right. Uh, again, that's track seven. There, it's selected. I want track one, one, two, and four, five, six. Five and six. Okay, track two. That's this one. Actually, I wanted track three, didn't I? To be the origin. Okay, once you've got all that set up, just go apply coordinate system. Okay, and then I can go into my 3D view to check this coordinate system now. Again, I'm going to go lock to camera, just see what that looks like. And really, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this grid to kind of line up with the bottom of this wall and um, it does so that's really good that gives me a real idea of 
that, that this coordinate system is, is lining up correctly. Um, so I'm happy with that. That's really what I'm looking for, is this is sort of lining up with the floor and it looks like it's representing where the floor is going to be. So once I'm happy with the coordinate system, and again, if I want to check it in more detail, I can kind of uh, zoom into the coordinate system here and sort of dolly round it to just sort of check how that looks. But I think that's fine. I'm happy with that. Okay. Great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, uh, again, we'll do a save as. And then I'm going to go file. Uh, and then what I want to do is go export. So now what we're going to do is export all this information to Maya. Now we want to be careful that we don't get an information overload, that we export so much data that, that we, we struggle to kind of, you know, so much information that we struggle to deal with it. So all I really want to do is output, uh, I want to export the camera. Sorry, I'm going to select Maya first of all. So .ma. I just want to export the camera and the 3D points. We haven't done a distortion grid, so we're going to just get rid of that. And I'm not really in, uh, interested in, tr in outputting all these tracks, so I think I'm just going to do that. That's fine. Uh, I just want the camera and the 2D points. Okay. Um, great. Uh, now what I want to do is uh, just simply go and save that somewhere so I'm going to save that uh, let's save that I'm trying to think of a good place to save this my H drive And what I want to do is that image sequence, I've actually got it in a, in a Maya project, and that image sequence that I was bringing in uh, is actually inside the source images. It's this dolly in. Uh, you can see the dolly in. Well, you can't see it here, but this is where the dolly in image sequence is. So it's inside this Maya project. And so what I might do is, because it actually, what it's actually doing is it's actually creating a Maya scene with the camera and the image plane and everything and all the locators where the markers are all set up. So I'm going to go into scenes and I'm going to go uh, tracked version 2 and go save great um so now what I, that now what i'm going to do is i think i'm going to i'm going to end the tutorial there and i'm going to start uh, a new tutorial in maya to sort of show us what we want to do with uh that scene inside maya okay